Well, according to Elon Musk, Tesla's AI team is no longer compute constrained. But what exactly does that mean and how does the future change based on that? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am back in Athens after a trip up to Springfield for my dad's memorial service. Thank you so much to those who sent good thoughts and prayers along the way. I do appreciate that. Today, I want to talk about a couple of posts from Ashok Eliswamy, from Robert Scoble, and of course from Elon Musk responding to them. So I'm going to start with Ashok. He said, handling many real world situations like construction requires understanding and reasoning about the scene semantically and not just geometrically. We'll get to that in just a second. That is why self-driving is an intelligence problem and not a sensor problem, i.e. needing LiDAR, radar, etc. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'm not going to have the sound on because there is music. There's always music in these things. And wow, that is just copyright strike gold here. Anyway, from Jackson S, full self-driving version 12 handles a chaotic construction section like an expert achieving smoothness I wouldn't have imagined even on my first attempt. And yeah, when we get there, it gets into this construction. Let me skip ahead just a little bit. It, it gets kind of nutty. <laughs> and honestly, watching this video, I wasn't exactly sure where I would have gone. I would have been quite confused about the whole situation, but clearly the full self-driving, and you can see the fact that the, um, the steering wheel here is, is not being touched, so it's driving on its own, and it's figuring out how it has to do this, and you can see there's some signs up there, and it moves through, and the light turns green, and sort of has to figure out. This is where I would have been completely confused. I would have been like, well, what am I supposed to do here? So you can see it's going into the wrong lane, and then it sort of maneuvers itself over to the opposite lane, and then it goes through here, and then there's more. It's kind of like a weird uh, obstacle course of, of those, you know, pylon things that they put up for construction. Absolutely crazy. I don't know who the heck set up this uh, this construction zone, but it's absolutely nuts. But these guys are freaking out. They, they obviously speak Chinese natively uh, with a translation underneath it, but it's pretty freaking amazing what this thing is doing, right? So this demonstrates very, very well how Tesla's end-to-end -end neural network architecture, in other words, photons in just completely trained on data with no heuristics provided can allow a car to navigate through a scene like this, which obviously it's never seen before because this kind of construction is, is very unique, right? There's similar things, but there's never been one exactly like this before. So it's able to take on a novel situation that it's never seen before and, and just go through it like a champ. I mean, this is just absolutely crazy. Again, I'm not even positive. I would have been able to handle this particularly well. So it's really, really impressive what it's doing. And as Ashok says, handling many real world situations like construction requires understanding and reasoning about the scene semantically and not just geometrically. So semantically means a, like an understanding. So semantics basically means uh, just words essentially. So, you know, you can say like, this thing is whatever it is, but what it is is a mug with my logo on it. So I can semantically describe this mug and tell you what it's about and what it is. It's not, that is not the same thing as just looking at the pixels and stuff. So basically, Basically, what the, what the full self-driving has to do is it has to absorb the pixels. It has to look at all of, these in, all of this information, and it has to figure out from that information what things are. And then, once it has kind of an internal language that it understands itself, and I've talked about this many times before, once it has that internal language, it's able then to make a plan and to execute on that plan and figure out what to do in a novel situation like this. Now, it does have limits, and I talked about this actually in the last video, which you can check out up here if you're interested. Jan LeCun talks about joint embedded predictive architecture, and that might be a way out of this sort of midterm planning thing. But in terms of making it through this construction zone, this is really, really remarkable stuff. And then very importantly, he says, that is why self-driving is an intelligence problem and not a sensor problem. In other words, people who are saying you need all kinds of radar, you need LIDAR, you need ultrasonic sensors, all of that stuff. He's saying it's an intelligence problem, not a sensor problem. So that is a, a very important take about this. And of course, the inimitable James Dalma follows up on this by saying, or put differently, it's not a hardware problem, it's a software problem. And that I... I would say is a pretty substantially important thing. Elon then responds to that and says, although hardware does have its limits. And that is really interesting. So I, of course, said, do you think hardware, you know, the current hardware, hardware three, hardware four, limits will top out around the level three mark or the level four mark? I don't think we're going to get to level five, but I don't even think that's necessarily the important part about this. If you don't know about the levels of driving, I will leave a link to that up here as well. But basically level three, is hands off for many situations with a warning of like a few seconds, like maybe 10 to 15 to 20 seconds, like take, please take over again. So it can do that. Level four is completely autonomous. You can sit in the back seat and not even bother about it. 
under most circumstances, but geographically limited, potentially weather limited, things like that. Level five is just basically it can drive all the time. So I don't even think that Tesla's working on getting to level five because level five is kind of a boondoggle. The, the, the chase of nines is going to be so big and the benefit is going to be so small that level four is really where they're going for. And of course, we've got Chuck Cook saying thank you for saying this. He, he has been a big proponent, not of putting other sensors in the car, but of putting new cameras or moving the cameras on the front of the car, like angling them outward so they can see better so that you have better left, right visibility and everything. So, you know, th there, there are limitations to the hardware. As far as some people are thinking, they're thinking about the hardware being the training compute hardware and things like that. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But I believe what, what Elon is saying is that there's, you know, the hardware, not just the cameras, but also the, the, the chips, right? The full self-driving three, full self-driving four chips will have their limitations. They will only be able to get to 99.99 something percent safe and you'll have to increase the hardware you'll have to get better resolution cameras potentially high definition radar to look through th snow and rain and things like that and then also version 5 plus of the full self-driving hardware stack so so it does have its limits and elon is admitting that and that's actually really cool and you know chuck is like hey cool chuck specifically is thinking about the cameras i know but i'm sure that elon is also thinking about the hardware boards and the potential for high definition radar as well although i think that cars right now that have even hard where three will be able to do just fine given how effective full self-driving 12 is. And then let's turn to something really, really positive. Robert Scoble, who if you don't follow, you should definitely follow him. He's all over AI. Anyway, he says, Tesla AI is very underrated. I had two AI founders while my car drove us through San Francisco. If you have a friend with full self-driving, beg them for a ride and definitely come beg me for a ride too. If you think Elon Musk has competition, you are simply wrong. There is none. And then Elon responded to that saying, yeah, 99% percent of people have no idea. And that's really true. You're part of the 1% that actually does know. So go, good for you. But then here's the important part. And improvement will accelerate dramatically now that we are no longer AI training compute constrained. So if you think that the hardware thing he was talking about, the limitation he's talking about here is the training compute, I don't believe that that's it. I think he, what he's talking about is the inference stuff that's on the vehicle itself. But this is really, really exciting. So 99% of people have no idea is just true. Most people just don't know. And they think that's something like Ford's Blue Cruise or Google's Waymo or something like that is the equivalent of what Tesla is doing. It is not. Tesla is way, way ahead on this stuff. And the really exciting news here is that they are no longer AI training compute constrained. They have been that way essentially since the get-go, but Elon and the Tesla AI team have specifically said that they were going to try to get to, I think it was 100 exaflops by like October, November of this year. So they may be far enough along that path now that they actually are not compute constrained anymore. Anymore. What does that mean specifically? Well, probably they have a whole bunch of H100s from NVIDIA that they finally got hold of and not just got hold of, but of course you have to build the centers around them. You don't just plug these things into the wall and then they operate at full speed. You have to build the energy infrastructure. You have to build the cooling infrastructure. You have to build the communications backbone. There are so many steps that go into building this thing out. And then of course the software and everything like that as well. So there's just a huge number of steps. So anyway, just getting a whole bunch of these things is not like, you know, getting a new PC or Mac or something and plugging it in and it just works. It takes a ton of work, but it sounds like they've got a lot of that done. They also probably have some Dojo chips online, although we have not heard a ton about that recently, but they probably also have that coming online. So they probably have access to a, a bunch of compute that they didn't even six or three months ago. They've probably got a lot of compute coming online right now. And that means that they're able to do training runs much, much faster. And so if you don't know the big bottleneck to end to end training, the cool part about end-to-end -end neural networks is it's just one neural network architecture and the code itself is not that big but what you trade off for that is that you get a multi-billion parameter model could be 7 billion, could be 20 billion, who knows? It's a bunch of parameters, which is just entries in the spreadsheet, more or less. It's a bunch of numbers in a really, really, really big spreadsheet. It's actually a multi-stacked spreadsheet. It's a tensor. But anyway, that's just details. But essentially what you're doing is you're trading off a huge amount of heuristic code, old software 1.0 code for this instead. And the code itself is not that big, but these tensors, these spreadsheets become very, very large. And every single one of those weights has to be trained. And that can only be done through 
compute time. In other words, you have to gather the data, you have to curate the data, and that takes a bunch of compute on its own right, because usually that is done by computers. It can't be done very effectively by humans the whole time. It's just too slow. But anyway, that takes a bunch of compute to do all of the data collection and curation, but then there is a ton of compute that has to be devoted to taking all of that video and doing iteration after iteration of the computer essentially guessing what the right answer is and then being told whether it's right or wrong. It goes through this process over and over and over again, you know, billions, trillions of times if you think about all of the data that it has to run. And it has to look at long video sequences. So it has to look at these extended video sequences, has to run through all of that stuff, project what's going to happen in the future, say, I think that this is what's going on right now and this is what should happen next, and then get the correct answer from the good human driver and then go like, oh, I made a mistake and figure this all out. Now, this is all mathematics. It's not, it's not done through language. It's done through math and gradient descent. But effectively, that's what's going on here. It's, it's, it's essentially a student and all of this video and everything is the teacher that's telling it what it should have done. And what it does is it tries to get closer and closer and closer to matching exactly what the teacher, the videos are telling it to do. And of course, the problem with all of this is it's incredibly compute intensive. It takes a lot of memory. It takes a ton of compute. And Tesla, quite frankly, has never had enough compute to make this work. And Elon said that eventually they would have that in 2024. And here we can see right here, improvement will accelerate dramatically now that we are no longer AI training compute constrained. So that is a huge deal. And if you think it's only applying to the car, then think again, it's also going to apply to Optimus because obviously full self-driving and Optimus have been sharing the same resources and they've been competing for the same resources. So now if they're no longer compute constrained, they can also train the humanoid bots architecture at the same time that they're doing full self-driving. So that means we should not only see dramatic improvement in full self-driving and Tesla's vehicles, but also in the demonstrations that we see from Tesla's Optimus. And so that means it's not only gonna be amazing for us to be driving full self-driving 12 3.1, which I think just rolled out. I don't have it yet myself. And of course, 12.4, 12.5, etc., which Ashok has said is going to have unprecedented progress, which is pretty impressive as well. So between Elon and Ashok, it sounds like we're going to get some really impressive full self-driving improvements in the next couple of iterations. But then also we should get a real treat from watching Optimus videos and watching what it's able to do autonomously now that it's not training compute constrained like it used to be. So Tesla's 2024 is looking like it's going to be really good in the embodied AI space. And like I've been saying, 2024 is the year of embodied AI. Whether it's a car or a humanoid bot, it's going to be embodied AI. We're going to have a chat GPT moment where the public is going to wake up and realize just how darn impressive all this stuff is. And I still think, even with all of the competition, that Tesla is leading the way. Definitely let me know what you think about that, whether you agree or disagree. While you're down there, please do like and subscribe for more of this kind of content and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.